Hello everyone and welcome back to The Chaos. Today I am joined by a very special guest. It is Lady Dakota Warren. <laughs> Hi! Round of applause from the studio audience. So the reason I say chaos is because last time we hung out, we went to a literary festival and we both got so wine drunk that we vomited. I feel like we're legally obliged to not tell this story. <laughs> Hillary Clinton was there, Stephen Fry was there. We were half there. Yeah, I wasn't there. <laughs> Today, I basically thought that it would be fun to try using some TikTok filters, specifically BookTok filters. There are some filters on TikTok and Instagram where it will tell you, it will recommend you a book. And so today, we are going to get some book recommendations from TikTok, for better or for worse. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm terrified, actually. So the first filter is, which sad slash hot girl book are you? <laughs> I don't know if I'm qualified <laughs> to I, do this one. I give you permission by proxy. <laughs> okay, fine. This I have high one. hopes. This is the one. It's the one. I can feel it in my bones. There's no such thing as an easy job. I've wanted to read this, you know. Nice. Okay, I'm happy with that. Cool. That's great. I'm very happy for you. I hope that I have the same luck. Okay, here we go. I'm rooting for you. The Idiot by Aleph Richman. Ooh, that could be cool. Have you read it? No. Okay, I want to read that. Yeah. <laughs> we went from sad slash hot girl to idiot real quick. <laughs> I've heard really good things about that, actually. You have? Yeah. Oh. I haven't read it. It's on my list, though. The next one that we're going to do is which classic novel? Am I? This is exciting. Here we go. Let's see. So much relies on this. Brideshead Revisited by Evelyn Waugh. Oh my god, one of my friends has been telling me to read that incessantly. Ooh. Maybe it's going to be good. I've read Vile Bodies by Evelyn Waugh and I loved it, so I'm, I'm happy about that one. I watched the show of it. Oh. Yeah. There's a show? I, ooh, I might be lying, but if there is, I've watched it. I feel like out of anyone, you're going to take this most personally. This is a sensitive topic. Yeah. Not Ulysses. <laughs> Ulysses! <laughs> What's funny about that? is that the bookshop that we're going to is where Ulysses was written. <gasps> cool! That's cool! Well, maybe I'm morally obliged. It depends <laughs> on the last one, I suppose. The last one is, which book talk book am I? This is your forte. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. This is a big moment. The Love Hypothesis! I actually haven't read this. Nice! Okay, I'm passing. Passing the torch. It's like a baton. It's like we're doing a relay. Okay, final choice. Got a lot writing on this one. Gosh, this is intense. Cinderella is dead. Have you read that? No, Cinderella is dead. Okay, <laughs> are you up for that? I guess I gotta be, huh? <laughs> the, uh... That's interesting. I um, love a good fairy tale. <laughs> <laughs> it could be really good. Yeah, at this point I'm honestly leaning towards your seat. <laughs> <laughs> we have options there. Yeah, I'm excited. What were the options? So my three options are why is our memory literally the length of a TikTok? We can't remember. <laughs> it's because of TikTok. <laughs> okay, so to conclude, my options are there's no such thing as an easy job, Brideshead Revisited, and The Love Hypothesis. And mine are The Idiot, uh, Ulysses, and um, something about Cinderella. Yes, okay. So now, the only thing to do is go to the bookshop. <laughs> Well, let's go! <laughs> let's go, Dora the Explorer! But before we carry on with the rest of this video, I just wanted to let you know that this video is very kindly brought to you by Squarespace, friends of the channel, we love them. Now, Squarespace is the hub for creating your online presence, whether that's through a blog, a website, an online store. Squarespace has the most brilliant array of templates that you can use and customize and use as a launch pad to create something entirely unique and your own. And for me, it's been really important to be able to create something that is completely personalized to me because I've been creating a website where I can log every single book that I recommend so that you can be redirected to my YouTube videos where I review them. It is starting to look very, very snazzy and Squarespace actually has incredible insights which help you to know what people are enjoying the most on your website so that you can create more of that content. So if you're in the market for creating a website, you're in luck, my friend because Squarespace offers a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch your first website or custom domain, you can use the code Jack Edwards using the link in the description box down below to save yourself 10%. So if you are needing a kick up the backside to start your website right now, take this as that moment. You're welcome. Massive thank you to Squarespace and on with the video. Okay, so we now 
have our books. <laughs> I'm Let's not, not talk about the journey to get them because that was torrential. It was difficult. <laughs> but we now have them and we have stopped ourselves with immense difficulty from reading the blurbs of our own books. So do you want to react to yours first? Yeah, do I read it out loud? Yeah. All right, Celine turns up at Harvard and finds herself dangerously overwhelmed by the challenges and possibilities of adulthood. How does she find friends? How will she fall in love? How does she deal with how difficult it is to be a failed writer? And how baffling love is. <laughs> at once clever and clueless, the two months heroine shows us with perfect hilarity and soulful inquisitiveness just how messy it can be to forge yourself. I'm excited to read this. I think that sounds really good. I'm a bit attacked though. <laughs> <laughs> Not us as struggling writers, <laughs> reading about struggling writers. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. You ready? There's no such thing as an easy job. A woman- Oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the spine, it's really cool. That is a cool spine, as spines go. Let's see mine. A woman walks into an employment agency and requests a job that requires no reading, no writing, and ideally, very little thinking. Oh, there's no thoughts, just vibes. Yeah. I like it. She is sent to an office building where she is tasked with watching the hidden camera feed of an author suspected of storing contraband goods. But observing someone for hours on end isn't so easy. How will she stay awake? When can she take delivery of her favourite brand of tea? And perhaps more importantly, how did she find herself in this situation in the first place? I like it's, it. It it's, sounds like yeah. bizarre. It sounds like it's got a lot to give. Yeah. But also not much. It's like one of those books where everything but nothing happens. Yeah. <laughs> that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's also translated, which I'm very excited about because, you know, I always try to read lots of translated fiction. Um, and it says this captures the deadpan absurdity and subtle surrealism in this inventive Japanese novel. That is so up my street. I'm buzzing about this. I want to read my reviews. <laughs> the New York Times said, Batuman has a rich sense of the details of human attachment and lust. Wow, nice. A moving continent hopping coming of age story. Coming of age is going to be interesting because I find that I don't read them as much now. Uh -huh. So it's going to be really interesting. Often wonderful, frequently hilarious, full of zingy one-liners and arch, deflationary observation. So it's a, it's a funny book. I think we've both picked like funny books. I think you should so... go for funny books. So this is going to be interesting. I'm actually really excited about this. I like this. books that make me cry. I wonder if I'll cry. Dragon Ball Cry? I hope so. I, I'm gonna want my money back. I wanna laugh <laughs> and cry. I want all of it. Should we do the smell test? Ready? Okay. Three, two, one. Three out of five. Oh. Smell. I think mine's a five. Yeah. Yeah, yours is a five. Yeah, yours is a three. Oh. <laughs> what if there's a symbolic of what's to come? Mm. How many pages is yours? Ooh, 400 exactly. Mine's 423. Okay, well, on with the reading. Let's go. See you soon. <laughs> also, this is what's the other side of the camera. Yeah, we need to... <laughs> How beautiful is that? That seems to happen in like slow motion. So we actually didn't manage to read as much as we expected to read today, mostly because it took us freaking ages to find the chateau. Although it was very beautiful and I would recommend it if you are looking for something a little bit different to do in Paris, it was completely empty. We were the only ones there. And we just sat in the gardens reading and no one, no one kicked us out, so I guess that's fine. But anyway, I am now 100 pages in to this book. I think what we'll do is an update from each of us on our books every 100 pages. And so far, I really don't know where this book is going. Like the first 60-ish pages were this story about surveillance and this woman who is watching a guy who is very enigmatic and strange and seems to be up to no good. And then just as it gets interesting, just as she seems to sort of catch him out, she quits the job <laughs> and she just starts a new one. The character is basically just recovering from a breakdown 
aren't we all? Where something about her old job, it's not specified what basically drove her over the edge. And so now all she wants in life is an easy job. And by the way, the irony of me reading this in public as a YouTuber is not lost on me. There's no such thing as an easy job, says the guy who reads books. <laughs> for a living. But basically the first easy job that she got has turned out to be much more complicated and confusing and intense than she anticipated and was promised. And so I'm thinking maybe that is going to be the general trend of the book, I'm not sure. So far the writing style isn't necessarily captivating, it's very basic, but also it's quite endearing. So I'm intrigued to see where this goes. And now let's get Dakota's 100 page update. Jack has tasked me with reading this book and sending regular updates. And so I think I figured I'd update you all. Currently just hit the 100 page mark. And if I'm perfectly honest with you, I'm considerably bored. So our protagonist, Celine, um, she goes to Harvard, but she's insufferable, but not in an edgy and fun and relatable quirky way. It's more so in a insufferable Holden Caulfield kind of way. But I'm only 100 pages in, so like I said, this is just initial thoughts and feelings. There are some things I really appreciate, like the fact that she is fascinated by literature and linguistics, and it does pay excellent homage to Russian classics, but it does feel like it's kind of trying to become one, which is interesting. Like I said, I think I just need to read more of it. Um, but look at this little drawing I did. Because it's spring, <laughs> and so I drew some flowers. <laughs> and that's how you annotate, ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between. It is a very intellectually stimulating read, and I like that it does a lot of elements, it's got a lot of layers, it's very, it's a very multifaceted read. It's very academia based and so it's all references to elements of academia, which I love. But in all honesty it does feel kind of, and I say this word loosely because I love being pretentious. I suppose it's not pretentious, it's more so just ostentatious. Hello, me again. I'm up to page 131 and the way that the love interest and Celine communicate is predominantly via email and the emails are fascinating and I want to read you an extract of one. I think the problem goes really deep down. The oil drum is empty so you throw in a cigarette. The whole thing bursts into flames. I don't understand anything that happens or how. I don't understand why it will trivialise these letters to say hi or to actually talk to each other. You say you're not in the mood for insignificant subtleties, but insignificant subtleties are the only difference between something special and a huge pile of garbage floating through space. I'm not making that up. People discovered it in the 19th century. And then after that, it's got... I think I'm falling in love with you. Dear Ivan, your message wasn't easy for me to understand. I guess I'm too used to thinking of words as a means to an end. Words create a mood, but they aren't the mood itself. Wow, <laughs> I think I might like this book a little bit now. I'm learning. I have reached the 200 page mark and it's picking up. The protagonist, who by the way, doesn't actually have a name, which I think is an interesting comment on the kind of dispensability of the labor force. Like she is very much a cog in a machine valued for her relationship to the working world and enterprise and industry. But anyway, she currently has a job at a cracker company writing little facts on the cracker wrappers. And honestly, I think I'm resonating with it now because I would quite like that job. I always thought I'm probably gonna end up being the person who writes like jokes in Christmas crackers or the little remarks in revision guides, that kind of thing. And so I'm kind of enjoying reading about this current job that she has, but she tends to not last in jobs very long. So I feel like this is gonna be short lived. The style is extremely dry and deadpan, but maybe like, a little too dry. Like the Sahara Desert is jealous. It's sort of about how the small stresses in her daily working life feel like absolute disasters at the time. And there's also kind of subtle elements of surrealism in here too. I just needed to give me like a little bit more. I feel like we're in second gear, just cruising. So we shall see. Okay, update, she quit the job and now her job is putting up posters which is as dull as it sounds. Okay, so I'm up to, I think I'm halfway through the book now. The plot trajectory is taking a bit more focus now. Instead of just being university based, it's now, they're traveling. I'm about to go to Paris, it's ever so, ever so relevant. <laughs> I'm also really liking the cultural exchange of this. I'm learning a lot about Turkish culture, Hungarian culture, Russian culture. So it is a very fascinating book in that regard. I am learning a lot from this. If you're looking for an academic book, this would be it. 
but don't take what I say seriously yet because I'm still going. Oh, my camera's gonna go flat. <laughs> So I've made it to the 300 page mark and this book is so boring. Genuinely, this book is single-handedly sending me into a reading slump because like, I get it. I get the point that it's trying to make and it's commentary on capitalism, but the actual process of reading it page by page is so dull, so dull. It's actually really reminding me of another Japanese book that I read, which is called Lonely Castle in the Mirror, which is another example of a book that I think I can appreciate as like a piece of art and the point that it was trying to make, but the process of reading 400 pages of it was like insufferable. <laughs> now for the next chapter, this one is called The Easy Job in the Hut in the Big Forest, which sounds dull as hell. Even that title just perfectly sums up the writing style here because it's so monosyllabic. So anyway, I'm cracking on with it, but oh, I'm really, really bored. It's so repetitive because it's essentially like um, a collection of short stories that all have a common thread where she just keeps getting more jobs. They turn out to be a lot more rigorous and complicated than she first imagined. And then she quits, right? And there's occasionally like recurring characters, but really and truly it is mind numbing. So I don't know, this is taking me so long to get through. And I feel like had it been a third of the length, it could have been this really cool and quirky abstract book, but instead we just have the most mundane level of detail over pretty much nothing. So anyway, as you can tell, I'm having a great time. <laughs> I hope Dakota is enjoying her book more than I am. We'll see. I'm fighting my demons right now vlogging in public. Look at this location. Oh my God, look at that bug. Wow. Oh, so I finished it. I finished it and I've got some feelings and there are some incredible quotes. I think that my favorite thing about the book is the underlinable quotes. There were some really insightful things in there that I took with me, that I will take with me forever. And I'm grateful that it challenged my traditional views on a lot of things. But I think that the entire thing was kind of just a lot of words about nothing. Loved the cultural relevance, loved the explorations on so many things, but the plot just was overshadowed by this horrible love interest. She quite literally chased him across the world from America to Hungary just because she liked him a little bit and he was an absolute asshole to her. Um, but I guess that's just young love, isn't it? Overall, I can see why a lot of people love it. I really can. And I loved parts of it, but I didn't love all of it. So I'm gonna give it three out of five. It is a coming of age story that chronicles Celine's budding romance and her interpretation of herself in the world at that pivotal young age when nothing makes sense. So Celine, our protagonist, is a daughter of Turkish immigrants and her love interest is Hungarian. And this is a really interesting juxtaposition in the way that it, the likeness and the differences. Um, it's set in the 90s when emails are exciting, which is interesting. And I love that because I wasn't even alive. <laughs> protagonist is obsessed with language and I understand that so much. It's obsessed with defining everything and articulating her every thought and desire but I think that the moral of the story is she actually can't especially in her love life and so it's got all these monologues I suppose on um, it feels redundant and it feels irrelevant but it's so impossibly relevant but I think that it's just it just feels clunky which is such a good word doesn't the word clunky sound so clunky it feels clunky and it feels out of place but it's not out of place i'm really contradicting myself here but i liked it but i think it was too long in all honesty i think it was too long okay that's me out thank you for having me it's a pleasure to meet all of you who i haven't met before i love you a lot i have finally finished this godforsaken book and i'm so pleased i'm so pleased i can read something else i did not enjoy this at all. And honestly, I was hoping this book would give me a paper cut just so I could feel something. What's frustrating is that the first story is probably the most interesting one and the least interesting story is the last one. There's kind of like undertones of weirdness and a little bit of magical realism. And I kind of get what the author was trying to do. By the way, this is by Kikuko Samara and translated by Polly Barton because the author and the narrator never kind of explicitly give you a commentary on capitalism and the job market, but this abstract little book is meant to kind of encourage you to go away and think about it for yourself. However, if that's the kind of thing you're looking for, I would be much more inclined to recommend another Japanese author, which is Sayaka Murata, because Convenience Store Woman is everything this book was trying to be, 
but better. The cover of this book describes it as wickedly funny. I would just describe it as wicked. <laughs> that this filter made me read this book. Not wicked in a cool way, wicked like I've been cursed by the wicked witch of TikTok filters. This book should have been way shorter. Any one of the five stories could easily have been cut. I gave it 2.25 stars out of five. And honestly, I'm gutted. <laughs> Everything was pointing in the right direction. Like I should have loved this book, but the brilliant title and cover is sort of where the brilliance ends, <laughs> to be honest. So that is a shame. I am really gutted about that. I am really, really gutted about that. Yeah, I would not recommend this book. So thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you decide to take on this challenge and read books that filters recommend to you, I hope you have more luck than we did. <laughs> I'm really rooting for you. I hope it goes better. I would be surprised if it went worse. But thank you so much for watching this video. I will leave all the links to Dakota's channel down below. Make sure you do go and subscribe. We also filmed a video over on her channel. And of course, a massive shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Subscribe if you're new, like this video if you liked it. All the best, stay in touch, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.